from 1934 to about the mid-80s uh, was a very quiet period. And banks in the United States uh, had, had basically, they were little monopolies. There was no branching across state lines. Uh, other institutions couldn't offer checking accounts. Uh, so they, they had uh, an incentive to uh, internalize risk management and not do anything uh, to jeopardize uh, being a bank. In the mid-80s, um, uh, uh, following the high inflation of the late 70s, money market mutual funds appeared and took huge amounts of business away from them. Uh, junk bonds appeared, took huge amounts of business away from them. And so the system began to evolve and part of their response was securitization. So you can't, as a regulator, you can't be in the business of being in an arms race with the financial system because you'll lose. I think, I think it's better to try to design a system that is such that the innovation is out in the open uh, and banks uh, want to show it to you. And that's, that's a system which is um, difficult to uh, design. You want to give banks incentives to be banks. Um, so it's not a popular thing to say, but they're going to have to have little bits of monopoly power. Um, I mean, a good example is Canada. Canada hasn't had a financial crisis in, I don't know, 150 years. Uh, and Canada has a small number of very large banks. Right? You can imagine that happening here. People would go nuts. Uh, but they're in a kind of informal club with the central bank. And the implicit agreement is you behave and you can be in the club. And it's very valuable to be in the club. You misbehave, you're out of the club. So it's a, it's a, again, it's a system where you know, entry is not, not, so, not so easy. And so you want to not lose your franchise of being a bank. And uh, you know, that, that's a system we know works, uh, uh, but it's not a popular thing to say. You know, we need these firms to have monopoly power. If you think about U.S. history, um, you know, in, in 1837, 1857, 1873, 1874, 1890, 1890, 1890, 1890, 1890, 1890, 1890, 1890, 1890, and 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 with this other kind of bank debt. Um, you know, we haven't really solved that, so I expect we'd you know, see it over and over and over again until one way or another we hit upon a solution. This is the history of all market economies. I mean, you know, the arrangements that, that um, prevented this from happening, again, were not, they were, they were accidental almost, right? So we're not at the point where, where you can, you know, say, look, here's the problem and here's the solution. It's, and part of it is this paradox that once one of these things happens, the, the populist anger towards bankers prevents any intelligent discussion. And by the time things calm down, nobody cares about it anymore. We're on to the next issue, you know, whatever it is. The best way to think of it is with the bank stress test that the, that the Fed did on banks. So we, we would propose asking banks uh, on a regular basis uh, about 200 questions of the following sort. Do, do these computations and tell me the answers. If house prices went down by 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, what's the dollar change in the value of your firm, including derivatives? You do this for... Uh, a wide variety of prices, exchange rates, interest rates, and you can also ask about if your largest three counterparties failed, you know, what would happen? So you get these sensitivities to various uh, scenarios that you propose. You don't ask them, what would you do if? It's not what would you do, it's what, what would happen right now if this happened? So the, this, uh, um, 
you know, we would propose be done on a regular basis, and uh, this could be aggregated, and um, this would allow you to answer these kinds of questions. Is risk building up? Uh, is it being dispersed? Is it being concentrated? And so on. Now, um, it would also be a way for economists to kind of think about the world, right? I mean, macroeconomics is driven completely by national income accounting, right? If you had these risk measurements, you know, we'd start to think in terms of, in terms of risk. So this is, this is basically something which is doable. Uh, we, we spent, I spent a long time at uh, several large institutions, Goldman Sachs, Citibank, for example, and um, asking them, you know, could you compute these numbers? And, you know, there's, they're very different. They're different kinds of firms. They have different global reaches uh, and so on. But it, we know from the stress tests that it's possible to get started doing this. So the stress tests were one of the really important things that came out of the crisis. And this is a way of, of taking that further and building on what we actually did. Economics um, uh, is a subject which uh, depends very heavily on abstraction, uh, which is important. Reality is very complicated, so you need to abstract from reality uh, in models. That's what models are for. So models are sort of um, uh, counting systems for ideas, so to speak. I think part of the problem is that um, since we didn't experience a financial crisis since the Great Depression, there was this you know, implicit view that one was just never going to happen. And if it wasn't going to happen, there was no reason to look back at history because that was irrelevant. Uh, and there was no reason to really study institutions because you didn't really need to bother with that. And abstraction became abstraction not from reality but from other models. So a lot of economic theory is, it's like modern art, it's kind of a conversation with itself and they kind of lost sight of, you know, reality. So, if, for example, graduate programs in economics, you know, uh, don't require economic history anymore. Uh, a lot of top programs don't even have economic historians. Um, and, you know, most uh, uh, business schools have faculties that don't really understand uh, all the institutions. I mean, they, could, they couldn't really teach about it even if they wanted to because they, they don't, you know, they just don't know about it. So there's a lot of, there's a lot, you know, linking to all this reality, historical and institutions currently is something that economists are going to have to do.